Welcome to today's episode of Zenroku Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Rashad Yerby. I have an incredible honor of speaking with someone who has truly mastered the intersection of art, education, and culture. Our guest today is none other than Miguel. Miguel is a jazz pianist, educator, and podcast host with over 15 years of professional experience in the music industry. His work spans multiple platforms, including his shows Playback, which explores the intersection between nerdum, culture, and blackness, and a grant-funded um, series that highlights the joy and uniqueness of art and culture. He's a graduate of New England Contemporary with a master's degree in contemporary um, improvisation, and he also performs on several acclaimed projects. Today, we're going to dive into the heart of what drives him, not just as a musician and educator, but as a person. Miguel, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me on, man. This is dope. Uh, really excited to just get into it because, you know, it's it's always dope to see another brother who loves anime. <laughs> Honestly. Yes, for sure. For sure. I am a, I'm a, I, on anime. I had the, the experience of being in Japan for seven years. Um, man, it it was it was pretty awesome uh, living in Japan. Just being immersed by that culture yeah. is pretty amazing. But yeah, man, thank you. Thank you. But I want to talk about your journey. Uh, you know, you've been playing the piano professionally for 15 years. What has that journey taught you about yourself, uh, both as an artist and a human being? I mean, it's uh, it's been, uh, you know, it has its ups and downs. And I think uh, being a musician professionally, when you make your art or your hobby, your job, it comes with a lot of wonderful things. Like, you know, part of how I make a living is something that I love to do. But sometimes I don't want to do that thing anymore. You dig? <laughs> I want to like chill and not do the thing but that's not an option when you're a professional musician you got to keep to have that upkeep so like you like you mentioned I've, I've, I've been playing professionally for a very long time and you know there's some success um and there are droughts in there there were times where i was injured like i hurt my hands and couldn't you know do music the same exact exact way i'm actually still coming back from an injury right now where my right hand just kind of stopped working about two years ago <laughs> for a sec um, and then you know, I've been rehabbing and trying to get kind of get back. But, you know, on the other side, a lot of wonderful things come from that. I kind of got into podcasting because I really love having conversations about art from the perspective of as an artist. Right. And it's taught me a lot of resilience. It's taught me a lot of uh, discipline and humility because there's always someone out there that's better. But that doesn't mean what you have to say isn't something that's valuable to other people. So. No, it's a, it's a, it's been a really fun time, and it's not, it's an ongoing journey. Like I don't know what's, what's going to happen next. I'm, I'm, I'm planning on some stuff, but we'll see. You know, it sounds like you've been, you know, experiencing both highs and lows during your journey. Uh, can you share specific moments where you faced a challenge, and how did you overcome? Like you was talking about with your hand and you in uh, rehab, what was that like? And give us room to it, you know, explore uh, that with your growth. I mean. It was definitely a difficult period. I had literally just actually finished my, my, my master's at NEC. So I just like, you know, put like, I don't know, too much money into my hands and then my hands didn't work. <laughs> so I, uh, it was very frustrating. There was definitely episodes of, you know, depression and just like mm -hmm. being down on myself, you know, didn't I make the right decision, all those kinds of things, but there was nothing to do, but try to get better. It was that or just, or not. Um, and I chose to get after it. I chose to do it. That took some time. I played a lot of The Legend of Zelda. I caught up on a lot of um, uh, shows uh, that I, you know, had kind of put on the backlog. I'm like, I can't play right now. I can't really do much. So I guess I'm just going to chill hard and try to recuperate, you, you know. But on the other end of that, once you do start to see some results and some um, milestones, it's extremely gratifying. I took a lot of time to work on my mental health because I saw that I was in a really dark place because I just wasn't happy with where I was uh, and I didn't see exactly a path forward. So mm. I started on my mental health. I was really trying to dig into what was going on. Why was I feeling, you know, not great outside of, you know, my hand not working. Um, and it turns out, uh, I actually have ADHD and I didn't know that until literally six months ago. I've, I've always been a very high achieving student. Well, 
Not always. I was a high achieving student in college. The ADHD was probably keeping me back in high school for sure. <laughs> but I was I was always I was a high achieving student. I always worked really well, excelled at every job I've been in, et cetera, et cetera. But something was constantly kind of just making things harder. And I didn't mm. understand why things were 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 just a little bit more difficult to me for me than my peers. Mm. But turns out ADHD. So um, you know, I am working with a psychiatrist, a therapist, and like trying to figure out the way to get around it. Even just knowing that there was something that I didn't have a handle on helped me kind of focus and figure some stuff out. So it's a journey and I'm, I'm on it right now, but we're here. We're trying. Yeah, man. And it seems like, uh, man, like on this journey, you have like experienced so much, especially when it comes to mental health and how you're so free to talk about that. And one, I, I just want to give you flowers right now. I salute you for speaking about that because a lot of times, especially in my profession, I see a lot of young men um, mm. and young ladies, especially in you know the military kind of maintenance world where we're kind of we're always gun ho about getting the mission done, fixing aircraft, got to get it in the air, you know, and you really don't take that time for yourself. So, man, I commend you for taking that time for yourself. One, recognizing it mm-hmm. two, and actually doing something about it. That takes so much courage. And I commend you for it, man. For real. Appreciate you, bro. Like, cause it, it's, it, it, it's tough. It's not easy, but mm. once you start Getting those flowers, those salutes from people around you, and you start to recognize what what's going on. It's so much better. Things yeah. things are brighter. You're like, oh, I see what's going on, and you can you can make moves. Yeah, for sure, for sure. But hey, I want to ask you. You said you know you you mentioned you like Yu Yu Hakusho, right? And you said that has been a big influence on your life, yeah. particularly you you know you quoted uh, Giraki, and then you like you commented like the whole heart. How does anime? or art in general, inspire your personal and professional growth? I mean, I love anime. I've, I've always, I've loved anime since I was uh, a five-year-old kid, just ch- checking out Toonami and everything on, on a Cartoon Network, as most of us did, right? Yeah, I, shout out to Toonami. On the other end of that, bro, I actually, I used to spend summers in Dominican Republic where my fam is from, right? And they actually had like Dragon Ball, but in Spanish going on the entire summer like every like you know monday through friday at like 2 30 or something like that you know dragon ball shit that you know like really just like <laughs> make it make it making it making it work i think the beautiful thing about anime is it, it it um has a lot of characters that show perseverance um you know they get knocked down they get they get back up and i think the biggest thing is they say the quiet part out loud that, that quote i i sent you about um from Genkai, yeah. he's or she's talking to uh, the main character Yusuke, and basically saying like, "If you're going to succeed, you have to look beyond beyond yourself. You have to mm-hmm. jump over this fear. You have to not uh, limit yourself." And I legit think about that quote like I don't know, like twice a week. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's, <laughs> that's that's a show I watched religiously when I was a kid. I just did a rewatch, but I'm a Grown ass man, like why? Why am I? Why am I thinking about this anime quote twice a week? But it's because it stirred something. It was like, okay, if I'm gonna do something, anything in my case, it's music or uh, podcasting or whatever. I have to be unafraid to fail, uh, to succeed, right? And that's most anime protagonists, most shonen protagonists. That's that they're constantly showing that thing. They have to jump over that, that hill. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I, yeah, I'm not gonna go like you know Super Saiyan or nothing, but it's <laughs> still something you got to work through. For sure, for sure. You know, you often work to bring together. You know, like you said, you know, your art, Afro Latino, everything that you're doing, your experiences with art. In your opinion, how do you think anime, jazz, and other forms of art help to tell a story to those who are under? underappreciated i mean i think self-expression is really important i mean i, I really en- i'm enjoying a lot of the um manga and, and anime that's coming out from authors who are millennials who are who have our experience you know uh i think a good example is like a uh, jujutsu kaisen which is a, a very ad- popular anime right now right and sp- specifically i'm thinking of a character um uh, he had a whole episode where he was just like, man, you really don't know what it's like to just like not the sand- the, the, the sandwich shop that you really was were, were in, was into closes and you don't know how that's going to impact your life because you don't know what that is. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I think for me, um, those little, the fantasy elements of anime, the mm-hmm. self-expressiveness in, in, in jazz, and the the voice that podcasting gives you, those are all things that uh, marginalized people struggle with. Mm. Right. Um, you, you were just saying uh, men 
uh, black men, Afro Latino men, any man who grew, who grew up in in, in America or, or whatever, um, struggles with just being able to say their emotions, which is like a very basic thing that you need to be able to do. Yeah. And he's got that yeah. jazz. If you need, if you have something to say, it's a bit esoteric, not something that's uh, very clear, but you ha- you have a, a vehicle for expression. That's me all day. Mm-hmm. I, I used to play classical music, and it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. It is, but like it's not. It's I'm the only way I have creativity is if I as in my interpretation of someone else's music. Yeah, jazz isn't that. Jazz is 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 well, how are you feeling that moment is what's going to come out, and I I really needed that for myself. And podcasting, man, like it creates community. So again, so another thing that we need and a, a voice to put, you know, things that you want to put out into the world, uh, like a beacon for people to kind of come to you. Um, so yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying to piece it all together, trying to make it part of this artistic practice. <laughs> yeah. You know, you speak often, you know, about resilience and, and taking it day by day. Right. And you yeah. say, how do you maintain the sense of discipline, especially when life throws you unexpected challenges, these curveballs? You know, you got a profession where you're working with your hands and now one of your hands is not working. Yeah. Um, That's a good question. Lately, what I've been trying to do is make sure that I'm not trying to get it all done at once. The constant recognition that whatever you're trying to achieve, there's a process to it. it there's mm. small steps that you got to take every single day. And that finding, try, trying to find rewards out of those small steps. I used to be a person that like, I'd sit in the practice room for eight hours and try to get something done. That's not how your brain works. That's yeah. not how your body works. It's not how you actually take in information. Over the years, I've figured out little bits of like, okay, if I do this for 10 minutes a day, that's okay. And honestly, that's a way better way to take in information. Uh, and I can go enjoy other things that you know, give me life my partner, my dog, you know, like whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. So the last two months specifically, while I've been kind of rehabbing my hand and getting back to it, I've tried to have just a nightly practice. That's very Zen and chill, no pressure. Mm -hmm. I'm only, I'm, 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 as long as I get to the keyboard and do something I've won today. Yeah. 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 So that's been my thing lately of just just these little steps and actually executing that. It, everyone says that, yeah, you got to break everything down into smaller steps, but do it. Does everyone actually do it? Lately, I've been doing it and I've been seeing results. I get yeah. you. I get you. As someone who's an educator, you know, how do you educate others? Like what lessons do you hope that your students uh, take away from the time that they spend with you? I think music has a lot of benefits outside of sounding good, you know, because what, what, do, you, what do you need to be uh, a confident musician? You, you, you need um, Discipline, you need creativity, you need uh, humility. And these are all things that I try to make sure I instill in my students. Um, You learn how to attack a problem because you can't just take in all that information all at once. You have to break it down into little steps. Mm -hmm. These are all things that you need to function as a human being, right? Most of my students are not going to be professional musicians. I've had a couple that have gone (laughs) on to, uh, you know, big music schools and and, uh, I'm super excited for them and, you know, going through that journey. Most of them are going to be with me until maybe their senior year of high school. And then I'm probably never going to work with them again on that level. So I'm trying to create like, or help create like well-rounded human beings who are good to themselves, good to other people. And uh, that comes through uh, the discipline and the love of music and on the piano. Wow. That's pretty cool. So let's talk about personal growth real quick. If you could give one piece of advice to someone who just started their artistic journey, whether it's music, education, any other creative pursuits, what would it be? Practice slowly. We Uh all try to do things so fast. The world is so fast. Everything's happening so fast. You learn things better if you do them slowly. Um, Period. Just do it slow. Yeah, take your time. I, and I mean slow. You dig? <laughs> like, yeah, not, not like just, I'll just, I'll only do this one pace. No, no, no. I want you to work on that, that one measure mm. very slowly. Just like break it apart into little pieces. You will have learned that measure so much better than you could if you just, I'm guilty of, of trying to go fast too. Everyone is. We all want the instant gratification. Yeah. But if you do it slow, you're going to learn it so much better. And it's going to it's, it's sit in you. It's going to be internalized. It's going to be something that's for you. Whatever it is, like art, the visual art, music, podcasting, 
you know, like sit, learn your technology, learn your microphones, understand what's going on, understand your, the marketing piece, um, mm-hmm. and how, how that like, goes into it. The reason we got to, uh, we got to together is because I, uh, were, were on a, 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 a a guest matching thing. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, and you know, that's a slow process. I'm not trying to get it all done and all at once do 20 interviews in a week. Nah, one or one, one or two interviews a week. Mm-hmm. Cool. Slowly. No, I got you. And so in terms of collaboration and like, you know, how we, you know, uh, linked up, uh, through that, uh, that website, you know, yeah. you, you worked on some amazing projects like nostalgia in between dreams. What do you think makes a collaboration successful? And also, what qualities do you look for in people that you work with? As far as what makes collaboration successful, I think trust. If you don't trust the person you're like laying something down with, it's not going to sound great. It's going to sound like a fight. If you want that, if you're trying, if that's what you're going for, that's your intention, sure. But uh, you know, with uh, improv- improvisatory music or music, any music that's like in the moment. You're commu- you're all communicating without speaking. There's no like you might have worked something out a little bit beforehand or whatever. But if someone goes goes into a, a kind of a different area than where you were, you don't stop everything. No, you follow them there. You make sure you support mm-hmm. them. Make the, you, you build them up, and they'll do the same for you. So definitely trust. Uh, and what and what do I? What was and, the and what question? quality? Yeah. And what qualities do you look for in somebody? Open mindedness. For me, I think the. The I can't I can't work with people who can only see it a, a, a problem one way because they're not going to hear me. You know, like the uh, we're not going to be able to have a conversation. It's going to be very one sided. Some people are more open minded in some ways and close minded in others, right? So everyone has a little bit of uh, of give and take. But um, I really need someone who is open minded and down to earth. I can't do it with these cocky motherfuckers. Sorry, can I swear on this show? <laughs> I got you. I got you. I got you. So, all right, Miguel, here's a fun one for you. Okay. Yeah. If you had to create your Mount Rushmore of the top four musicians, artists, whoever influenced you the most, who would they be? Let's go D'Angelo. Ooh, good, um, good, good pick. Yeah, I love, I love, I love, I love D'Angelo. Let's go Ahmad Jamal. He's a jazz pianist. Yeah. Um, uh, we did really some tricky, interesting things. Uh, let's go, uh, Chick, Chick Corea, uh, okay. another another of the the first three Kanye albums. I don't I, I don't mess with, with 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 Red Hat Kanye at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, I hope he gets help and stops saying horrible <laughs> things. But I I do love those th- those first three Kanye albums. Yeah. So no Coltrane, no uh, Sade. I I love Coltrane. I love Sh- uh, yeah. I, I I love those artists. But as far as like influences on me and yeah. what I try to sound like. Mm-hmm. Not so much, you know. It's, it's stuff that I like. I have in my bag, and I learn. Everyone wants to sound like Coltrane, so why would I want to, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to sound like everybody. Yeah, I really like uh, Bill Lawrence. Uh, he's a he's a pianist from that plays a lot with the the Snarky Puppy, uh, which is a very mm-hmm. popular group. But I like his, his 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 solo trio stuff, which is really cool. One of my mentors, Ran Ran Blake. Um, he was one of my teachers at. Uh, NEC, uh, he mixes a lot of jazz and film noir together. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the way he thinks about ear training and just conceptualizing music was a huge, huge influence. Wow. So I think I'll, I'll hold it off there for now. I'm missing, I'm missing somebody. One of my mentors, Dan Lutz oh, and yeah. uh, uh-huh. Deb Huber, they, they, they taught me a lot about um, how to organize things and uh, leadership and, 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 and things like that. Okay. Well, before we wrap things up, is there anything you would like to promote, talk about? The floor is yours. Have at it. For sure. If you like anything you heard here, make sure you check out Play Black. It's on um, anywhere you listen to podcasts as well as YouTube. Uh, it's me and my good friend and wonderful collaborator, Jay. Uh, we're artists of color and we talk about nerds. Uh, uh, nerdy crap, uh, <laughs> anime, uh, MCU, comic books, uh, TV shows, everything. Um, yeah, we just love to to get into it and the deeper meaning of those things and how it affects our our lives because it's a beautiful thing. Getting to talk about this stuff on a deeper level, again, man to man, and talking about those those, those emotional bits is uh, is important. It's important for people to see that. And then on that same feed, uh, I have the, the BIPOC Artist Hour, which is a show where I interview artists of color um, about 
uh, their unique journey through the arts, but also what brings them joy. Cause we're always talking about the struggle, but we never talk about the joy. So yeah. got uh, to make sure to put that out there and check out my, web, my, my website, uh, Miguel Lannister.com. You'll yeah. see like some recordings I've done as well as, uh, the links to all the podcast stuff as well. And you have some beautiful and amazing work. I visit his website guys. It is amazing. I like his website. I like his design. Uh, I appreciate I like his work. That Thank you. No problem. <laughs> Well, Miguel, it has been an absolute pleasure to have you here today on this show. Your insights and intersections of art, culture, and personal growth has been very wonderfully inspiring. And I know our listeners take away a lot from this conversation. Thank you for your time and be sure to keep an eye out for this young man here. So, all right. Take care, fam. Appreciate you, bro. Peace.